Now, Autolite and its 60,000 dealers and service stations present... Suspense. Tonight, Autolite brings you Edward G. Robinson in You Can't Die Twice, a suspense play produced and directed by Anton M. Leder. Friends, if a camel got a drink of water only three times a year, his tongue would hang out like a Christmas necktie. But an Autolite Stay Full battery thrives on three drinks a year. Yes, sir, an Autolite Stay Full battery needs water only three times a year in normal car use. And by Cornelius, an Autolite Stay Full battery has extra plates for extra, extra power, protected by fiberglass insulation for stronger, longer life. Why, in recent tests conducted according to the Society of Automotive Engineers' life cycle standards, Autolite Stay-Full batteries gave 70% longer average life than batteries without the Stay-Full features. So remember, be battery right. Get Autolite. And now, Autolite presents Edward G. Robinson in a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Yeah. It's funny how it happened. Take a good look at me. Am I the type you'd say could harm a fly? Ask around my neighborhood or ask any of my old customers. Sam, they tell you... Sam Brown? Why, he wouldn't say boo. Sam Brown a murderer? <laughs> Besides, there must be some mistake somewhere. Uh, Sam's dead a whole year now. <laughs> So that's what I want to explain, how it all happened. It all began that Sunday morning at home with my wife, Katie. Poor Katie. An April fool. Today is April fool, isn't it, Sam? Yeah, I guess it is, Katie. Why? Why? Because we'll have to expect a lot of silly tricks today, that's why, from your so-called friends. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I guess we'll have to be on our guard, huh? <laughs> You're talking. Yeah. After the way you fell for that April Fool's joke last year. <laughs> yeah, some let down, all right. When I learned it was all a practical joke and I hadn't won 50000 in the Irish sweepstake. Hey, you, you sure took it to heart, too. Uh, why not? Will I ever in my life even see money like that? Oh, Katie, please. Will you ever make it from your miserable milk route, will you? Oh, I'm sorry I even mentioned it. You were going to give me so much. You were going to get places. Throw a million at my feet. A million what? Empty milk bottles? Well, so I didn't get the breaks. Now, what do you want me to do, Katie? Rob a bank? Murder someone? Please let me alone, will you? I want to hear... Turn that I, off I, and I, listen to me. Counsel. Murder somebody, he says. Being poor is murdering me. I'm fed up, I tell you. Look up to here. Oh, Katie, please. No, Katie, me. What's the matter? So early in the morning. Hello? Uh, Mrs. Catherine Brown? Yes. You're the wife of Samuel E. Brown of 22 Maple Street? Yes. I'm sorry to have to inform you that your husband uh, has been killed, Mrs. Brown. What's that? His body was found just a few hours ago in a ditch on the Clinton Turnpike. Killed by a hit-and-run driver, Mrs. Brown. Ha, ha, ha. What is this? Somebody's idea of an April Fool gag? Now cut it out. Well, I'm really sorry, Mrs. Brown, but this is not an April Fool gag. I wish it was for your sake. Please call it the county morgue, will you? What? Well, you'll have to identify the the remains. It's almost beyond recognition. But there's a wallet, Mrs. Brown. Okay, That's all we have to go on. L listen, you. You think a joke like this is funny? You ought to have your head examined. Who is this? Police Sergeant Ryan, ma'am. Third precinct. Go on, you crazy dope. Mrs. Brown. Please be at the morgue as soon as you can. That is, if you want to claim your husband's body. Hey, what was it? Some gag? Of course it was a gag. Well, you're right here. Probably that Joe Brody again with his April Fool jokes. He'll yeah. get a piece of my mind, believe you me. Four firemen, however, Must you listen to that the... radio? Oh, Katie, Boy my one day off like a morning, week. Let me live, the body please. Of a man tentatively identified as Samuel E. Brown... A local milk driver employed by Dessel Dairy's company. What? What did he say? Shut up! the victim of a hit-and-run driver. Listen. The body was found in the ditch on the Clinton Turnpike, mutilated almost beyond recognition. A wallet is the sole clue as to his identity. And that winds up the 9.30 edition of the... Well, what do you know about... Did you hear that, Katie? Yeah, I did. Well, that was me, wasn't it? Me they were talking about. <laughs> That's a hot one, isn't it? Huh? Sam... That phone call just now. Yeah? I thought it was an April Fool joke. Must have been the police. Wonder how in the world... Huh? Now what? Let me... Hello? Uh, Katie? This is Harry, Katie. Gert and me, we just heard. We, we were listening to the radio and you... 
You all right, Katie? You know about it? Sure, I know about it, but... Oh, that... we feel awful about it, Katie. And we're coming right over. We'll take care of everything. Uh, Harry, listen, uh, it's all... Bert will go downtown with you when you're ready. I'll take care of all the paperwork. Now, oh, excuse me for mentioning it at a time like this. I don't have to go any... What paperwork? By the insurance policy I sold Sam, remember? Remember I told you both how someday it might be... Well, little did I dream. I'm so glad I talked you both into it. 10000 with double indemnity for accidental death. That's 20000 you know. A final thought for your welfare from Sam. Harry, I, I, I can't... I know, I know. I know you don't want to talk about it now. Listen, Katie, we'll be right over. 10, 15 minutes. Harry! Uh, uh, Harry. Well, what was that all about? What do you want? Katie, I'm talking to you. Wait. Sam, I'm trying to think. Oh, it's impossible. You're right here. But Sam, what do they mean? Huh? They identified you by your wallet. You have it, don't you? My wallet? Your wallet! Well, uh, naturally, right here in my pocket where I all... What the devil? I'm wearing the same pants. It's not here. Wait a minute. I remember something now. Well, that maybe clears up this whole mystery. Yes, Sam? Well, uh, last night after the poker game, uh, coming home on the bus, there was uh, some character jostling against me. We almost had a fight on the bus. Sure, now I think of it, he must have picked my pocket. Why, Katie, it's him they must have found on the turnpike. Sure, uh, say, let me at that phone, will you? I'll call the police and straighten out this No, hall. wait. Wait, Sam. What for? Sam, maybe we ought to... Consider this thing a little. Consider what? Your $10,000 life insurance policy, Sam, with that double indemnity clause. What are you talking about? About our one big chance that we've been waiting for. See, well, what are you driving at? Did anybody see you coming home last night? No, I don't think so. Why? Can't you understand? There's a body lying in the morgue. The only thing they got to go by was that wallet. Say you never came home last night, Sam, or ever again. Say I went right now huh? and identified that wallet. The insurance company would pay me $20,000, wouldn't they? Yes, I... I guess they would. Are you out of your mind? You could disappear right now. Go to Chicago, say, without being seen. I could write your general delivery. After a while, after I collect, I could join you there. Oh, no one will be the wiser. Uh, we can begin life all over. Rich! Um, this could be it, Sam. No, no, no. Money gotten this way would never do us any good, Katie. For that amount of money, I'll take my chance, and uh, so will you. Katie. You'll do it, Sam. Uh, well, oh, yes, you will. Uh, because if you let me down uh, this time, oh, it's the end. Katie, I... Uh, $20,000. Twenty. Thousand dollars. For suspense, Autolite is bringing you Edward G. Robinson in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Say, uh, Hap, will you help me out here? Why, sure. All right. Uh, pretend you're on a quiz program, and I asked you this question. Uh -huh. What is it that needs water only three times a year? Mm, well, let's see. It's, uh... Is it a kangaroo? No, it's not a camel, nor a cactus. Oh. Well, can you give me a hint? All right. goes on your car. The oh. initials are A-L-S-F-B. A-L-S-F-B. Oh, I've heard that somewhere before. It's dandy. It's dynamic. It delivers power, pep, performance. It's an Autolite Stay Full battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Hey, don't tell me. Let me think. It's, uh... Um... I can't give you any more hints, except to say it's an Autolite Stay Full battery with that extra liquid reserve. That's it. It's an Autolite Stay Full battery. Right. With Autolite, the gentleman wins a hand-embroidered Autolite Stay Full battery carrying case <laughs> and the right to drive into the nearest Autolite service station and buy an Autolite Stay Full battery. Remember, be battery right. Switch to Autolite. And now... Autolite brings back to a Hollywood soundstage Edward G. Robinson as Sam in You Can't Die Twice, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Katie always could make me jump through a hoop. Besides, I, I might as well admit it, I'm human. Show me the human can spit of that kind of money. Anyway, I snuck out of town that very day, got to Chicago, got me a crummy room under the name of Lionel Hendricks. Weeks went by and nothing happened. No news at all from Katie, and I got really frightened. Something gone wrong. I wrote her, got an answer, general delivery. Dear 
Dear Mr. Hendricks, in answer to your inquiry, everything is proceeding smoothly. I'm advised that the delay on the transaction is because of its unusual nature. No more letters, please. Thank you for your interest, sincerely. More weeks passed. Another month, two, three, without a word from her. Now the police found out. Were they on my trail? And then I began to get suspicious of Katie. What was she up to? I had a phone. Hello? Uh, this is me. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> oh, it's you, Clara. Well, I, I had to talk to you. Why haven't you written? What are you up to? Haven't you got it yet? Not yet. Well, when? In a little while, Clara. Just have a little more patience. Oh, cut out that Clara stuff. I'll be seeing you soon, dear. Well, Katie, it's awful lonesome for me. Do you love me, Katie? Of course I do. Well, I get to wondering. It's six months now. This is crazy. I I'm a wreck. I I'm scared. I can't stand this life. I've never been away from home. I'm a family man, Katie. Hey, Katie, make it quick, will you? For Pete's sake. Who is that? What? That voice. You're imagining. I heard a man's voice. He's right there in the room with you. Now, don't deny it. I'll, I'll explain everything when I see you, Clara. I see. So you're two-timing me, huh? Well, that explains everything. I'll fix you. I'm coming home right now. If you do, you'll go to jail for about ten years. Think it over. Goodbye, Clara. Hey, you see? What could I do? Anyway, that's when I started the drink. What else was there? There I was all mixed up and alone. I used to get good and drunk and wish someone would at least say... Hello. I said hello. You all alone? Hmm? What's that? <laughs> you really tied one on, haven't you? Stranger in town? Oh, I'm a stranger everywhere. How do you know? You're lonely, huh? Oh. Oh. Well, don't cry no, about I'm it. I'm not crying. You want company? Sure. <laughs> You're kind of cute. Mm. Luther! Yeah, Cleo? Rye high on the gentleman here. Coming up. Your name is Cleo, hmm? Yeah, I know. Hmm. Cleo Carter. What's your name? Sam. Sam? Oh, Sam. Sam what? Oh, I mean uh, Lionel. My name is Lionel Hendricks. That's my name. Lionel Hendricks. Uh, what happened to Sam? Oh, he's dead. Dead? Yeah, dead. Poor lonesome ghost. <laughs> Nobody cared. Are you married? Uh-huh. <laughs> Where you from, Lionel? You're not on the lam or something, are you? Cop shy? No, nobody cared. Not even his widow. Sam's widow. Her name is Katie. Catherine, you know. Mm. Katie don't even care. Two timing him. Oh, well, never mind. Change the subject. What do you do, Cleo? Ah, oh, this and that. What do you do, Lionel? Oh, that and this. <laughs> Where, where are you from, Cleo? Here and there. And you? Oh, there and here. <laughs> <laughs> we make a great team, don't we, yeah, Sam? <laughs> we sure do. Uh, here you are, Cleo. Why, hi. Thanks, Luther. Uh, how about a trip up the Nile, Cleo? <laughs> Character. Uh, Luther's a comic, Sam. Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah, my name isn't Sam. Now, nah, Lionel is my name. Lionel Hendricks. Hey, excuse me. Lionel That's Luther, right. not Sam. Uh, I remember. Hiya, Cleo. Hey, when did you get back? I got to pay a visit. Uh, nice to have met you. Oh, no, no, no. Where you go? Where well, you going? Uh, oh, no, no, no. Don't leave me alone, will you? You like my company? Oh, very much. Oh, very, very, very <laughs> much. <laughs> much as that. Huh? Yeah, I said. Well, well it's, it's this way with me, Lionel. I'll yeah. be very frank. First of all, you're a married man. Oh, no, I, no, 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 no. Not me. No, no, Sam's married. Not Lionel. That's Sam Brown. You're a good fellow. All of a sudden, dead. Killed dead. <laughs> You know, always left a, room. Oh. a wallet. There's a few cents in it. Now he has twenty thousand dollars. Success story. Twenty thousand. Mm hmm. He was worth more dead than alive. What do you think, Lionel? Uh, Lionel, let go of my hand. Look, oh. I got to see your friend oh, over no. there. Yeah, but why? Percentage, Lionel. He always shows me a good time. Spends money like it was water. Yeah. He's rich. See? Oh, he's rich. Well, I'm richer. No, no, don't leave me alone, Cleo. I, I got twenty thousand dollars. I tell you. Not you, Sam. <laughs> 
Well, what's his and his mine? I can lay my hands on it any time I want. You wouldn't kid me, would you, Mister? I... Oh, don't say a word. Not a word. Oh, I think I'm going to be sick. Well, I think you better come rest at my apartment, Lionel. I really do. We can talk there. I like your talk. It jingles. <laughs> Oh, uh, what? You awake, Angel? Huh? What? Where am I? The little Cleo's, don't you remember? Just running the vacuum. All those butts you tumbled on the floor. Cleo? Cleo Carter. Took pity on you, let you sleep off a hangover on the couch here. Cleo. Are oh, you forgotten? I remember. Guess what you need is a little drink, huh? Yeah. Well, it's on. Oh. <laughs> oh. You know why I'm laughing? I'm surprised at myself. Why? Because I like you. I don't know when I ever felt this way before so fast. Hmm? You said you felt the same way about me. Did you mean it or was it that bottle talking? Yeah, I, I must have meant it, Cleo. <sighs> All right, then. How does it feel to be dead, Sam Brown? What? How do you suppose Katie's taking him? Uh, no, no, I, I didn't tell you. That's all right, it's all right. You told me everything, but it's safe with me. To me, Sam Brown is dead. Oh. Uh, could I please have that drink? Oh, oh sure. Okay. The insurance money really comes to $20,000, doesn't it? Or were you exaggerating? No, I mean, yes, it's, uh, it's 20000 Why are they taking so long to pay off? Oh, I don't know, I don't know. Ten months is a very long time. Maybe they've already paid and Katie's holding out on you. No, 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 no. Katie wouldn't do a thing like that. Why not? Look what she's already done for the money. Well, not Katie. She wouldn't. She may have met another man she likes more than you. Oh, no, stop it, stop it. Well, you, Katie isn't like that. Look, you. Did you mean what you told me about you and me, or didn't you? Will you repeat it sober right now? What? Re repeat what? That you never felt about her in all your married life the way you feel about me. That you're going to leave her for me after you get the money. Say it again, Sam, or walk right out of my life. Oh, Cleo. I mean it. Well, I, I, I can't say that about Katie. I just can't. Get out. Well, that's the way you feel. I'll go. Go ahead. And when you leave, you might think about whether or not you can trust me now that I know all about it. What? I could call the police, you know. Oh, Cleo. <laughs> I never did know how to handle women. That was always my big trouble. Well, she, she could have called the cops, couldn't she? So I made up with her. Anyway, I had someone to talk to now. Maybe something would happen. <laughs> it did. Oh, she was smart, that Cleo. You know, Sam, it'll be good to have $10,000 all at once. Yeah, sure will. Know what would be twice as good? 20000 <laughs> Wish for the moon, why don't you? <laughs> My share's only ten. Your share's as much as you can get. And you can get it all. Oh, no, no. Katie would never give it to me. Not all of it. The way I figure it, Sam's this. She'll come here to Chicago when she finally collects. Well, she can't afford to have you suddenly turn up alive back there, so she'll come here. When she does, we'll take it all, you and me. Oh, no, no. She, she'll never give me all of it. I know, Katie. I said we'd take it. Use your head, Sammy. Use your head. There's ways. Huh? Oh. Oh, no, Cleo, no. Well, perhaps not. But uh, get used to the idea just the same. Like breaking in a pair of shoes. Know what I mean? That's the way she worked on me, over and over again. Then she began to get impatient until... One day, you're less a day from the time I left home. What is all of this? A practical joke? Tomorrow's April 1st. You waiting to tell me April Fool? I'm calling your bluff, Sam. Come on down to a phone booth right now and call that wife of yours. Let me hear with my own ears. Hello? What do I say? Answer. Uh, hello, hello uh, Mrs. Brown? This is, uh, me. I've got it. I'm holding it in my hand now. I'm leaving for Chicago this afternoon. I'll be there at midnight. Get me a room at the Stevens. You'll meet her at the station information booth. Tell her. Huh? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll meet you at the station in information booth, Katie. But why? Why? 
You're running a cabin out in the country. You're taking her on a second honeymoon. Cleo. Tell her. Hello. Uh, Hello. Uh, uh, Katie, I'm, I'm uh, renting a cabin out in the country for us. We're, we're going on a second honeymoon. <laughs> Cleo, I can't go through with it. Please change your mind. I'll give you just 15 minutes. I'll be hiding in the back of the car, and if you're not out there with her and the money in 15 minutes, I'll have every cop in Chicago looking for you. I mean it, Sam. Lionel! Lionel! Darling! Uh, thank you, Mr. Gittner. Darling! Bye. Darling! Uh, <laughs> Lionel. Uh. Oh, Sam. My darling Sam. <laughs> I'm so happy. Uh, hello, Katie. <laughs> uh, d- 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 don't, don't, don't cry. <laughs> You're crying, too. Oh, oh no. <laughs> we're together again. Uh, yeah. And we're rich. We're rich. Yeah. Oh, aren't you excited? Wasn't it worth waiting for? And no one suspects. I can't believe it. We have money and we're together. Uh, here, here uh, let me take your bag. Uh, yeah, it hasn't been out of my hand the whole trip. It's all in here, in $100 bills. Oh, no wonder it's so <laughs> heavy. Come on, let's, let's go quick. We're really going on a second honeymoon. Oh, Sam, I could die for joy. Well, it certainly is way out in the country, Sam. Say that for it. So quiet. Yeah, I know. You're acting funny, Sam. I couldn't help it that it took so long. He said they had to investigate and everything. It was no picnic, let me tell you. Oh, the devil is that light. Oh. What is... Is this the cabin you rented for our second honeymoon? This shack? Sam, what is it? You couldn't have brought me here for a honeymoon. Why did you bring me here? Answer me, Sam. Sam. I'm leaving you, Katie. What? I'm leaving you. This is the end of our life together. But why? Yeah. Why? Uh, open the bag and get out the money. Yeah. Now you take half and I take half and we each go our way. Uh, please, quick, quick, quick. How can you do uh, that? Oh, I, I want my half now. You mean you want it what? all, Sam? Now you said you'd let me handle it alone, Cleo. You promised not to interfere. You promised. So that's it. Another uh, woman. Uh, take the money out of the bag, Sam, and let's go. <laughs> oh, Sam. <laughs> Oh, Katie. <laughs> How could you do this to me? I loved you, Sam. I loved you. I wanted only your good. Believe oh, me. Oh, Katie. I... Katie, don't cry. <laughs> I can't stand seeing you cry. It hurts me. Sam! <laughs> Katie. Sam! Huh? Get the money, Sam. All of it. Uh. Katie, I have to do this. Not one cent. Now, give it to me, Katie. Cleo, can't, can't you keep half? Half? I'm keeping it all. Uh. And you know what else I'll do? I'll send the police a letter. Oh, no. And tell them everything. No, no, you wouldn't. Wouldn't I? Oh, wouldn't no, no. I, though? Kate, 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 you don't mean that. Just try me. No, Go please, ahead. Katie. You might as well put down that wrench, no, because Katie. I'm not scared of you. Not that much. Please. I'll send them a letter with a whole story and no. your description and hers and everything. You won't. Ah! You won't. You won't. Because it's all your fault. All your fault. All your fault. <laughs> Katie was dead. I don't remember much of the ride back to Cleo's place with the police with the money on my lap. I was numb, exhausted. I collapsed on the floor of the apartment, fell asleep, cradling that valise, and it was past noon I woke up. The valise was still in my arms, but it was open, and the money was gone. And so was Cleo. She wasn't there. She was gone. I was alone. Cleo. Luther, have you 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 seen Cleo today? So she left you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you better have a drink. Yeah. You look as though you could stand it. That's right. Well, you can't blame Cleo. Not after what you'd done last night. Huh? Huh? 
Last night? I know all about it. What do you mean? You know what I mean, Sam. Ah, uh, how can you live with yourself? Uh, I didn't do anything. I... Don't give me that. I know everything because I was there. No, no. You think no one was watching you, huh? <laughs> but, Sam, I saw the whole thing from start to finish. You couldn't have. You can't, will you? If I'd done that, I couldn't live with myself for the rest of my life. It'll torture you, see? Now, stop it. You won't eat and you won't sleep. Because the memory of it will always haunt you. Oh, stop it, stop it. It'll haunt you and haunt you until the day you die. Unless you confess right here and now. No, no. Confess! All right, stop. I did it. I killed my wife. That's about all, Lieutenant. It was strange how it all happened. Strange how it started. Yeah, and stranger still how Luther here knew. Yeah. How did you know, Luther? Oh, I didn't, Lieutenant. What's that? Oh, not a thing. Well, what did I say to him? How can you live with yourself after last night? So what? Everyone done something last night they was ashamed of. Oh, every night in the week. How was I to think this here guy committed murder? You see, Captain, all I was up to was a... Well, what's the date today? You get it now? I was just making what an April Fool joke. April Fool joke? April Fool. <laughs> oh, Luther, you killed me. <laughs> Thank you, Edward G. Robinson, for a great suspense show. Uh, your name Wilcox? Yes, Mr. Robinson. You the uh, fellow that keeps talking about auto lights stay full batteries? Yes, Mr. Robinson. Well, I want one of those batteries in my car, see? Yes, Mr. Robinson. Can't you say anything but yes, Mr. Robinson? Yes, Mr. Robinson, I can say this. Stay full batteries are made by auto light men who make over 400 products for cars, trucks, airplanes, and boats in 28 auto light plants from coast to coast. Yes, siree, and Autolite also makes complete electrical systems for many makes of America's finest cars. Batteries, spark plugs, generators, starting motors, coils, distributors. All ignition engineered to fit together perfectly, work together perfectly, because they're a perfect team. So, folks, don't accept electrical parts that are supposed to be as good. Ask for and insist on Autolite original factory parts at your neighborhood service station, car dealer, garage, or repair shop. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. Now here again is Mr. Edward G. Robinson. Once again, it has been a real pleasure to join Tony Leader and his suspense cast and crew. I hope they'll invite me back many more times, and that's no April fooling. I know, too, that all of you are going to be as anxious as I am to hear next week's show when radio's outstanding theater of thrills will present Ronald Coleman in The Noose of Coincidence, another gripping study in... Suspense! suspense. Edward G. Robinson will soon be seen, starring in the 20th Century Fox production, The House of Strangers. Tonight's suspense play was written by Joseph Ruskall and prepared for suspense by Walter Newman. Music was composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The entire production was under the direction of Anton M. Leader. In the coming weeks, suspense will present such stars as Edmund Gwen, Bob Hope, Mickey Rooney, and many others. Next Thursday, same time, hear Ronald Coleman in The Noose of Coincidence. <laughs> You can buy Autolite Stayful batteries, Autolite resistor spark plugs, Autolite electrical parts at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>